What's up everybody, I am not a software engineer, but I did have a friend of mine reach out recently with all of the issues in the job market, especially for tech employees, um, to actually take a look at his resume to see if he could reword it and make it look a little bit better and things like that. And I got to thinking, you know, I'm sure with all this uh, generative AI stuff that we have going on, it is pretty common um, for people to actually leverage things like ChatGPT and other services that are probably based on ChatGPT to basically revamp their resume. So I'm going to go ahead and try and build something from scratch or rather to leverage uh, a few things that have already been done for us, but to also leverage uh, ChatGPT in order to kind of do a resume rewrite and make it look much nicer than it does ordinarily. So the first things first, I'm actually logged into ChatGPT and I basically dumped in a JSON formatted blank resume for an accountant, okay? So this is gonna be a fake accountant and I have asked ChatGPT to basically fill it out with fake experience. And uh, this is actually going to be kind of the premises of us creating a, a new looking resume from scratch. And I would actually highly recommend storing your resume in JSON if you don't do that already. Um, it does make kind of generating new versions of it much simpler, especially when we look at something like Latex CV. So Latex CV is actually something created by, I believe his name is Jean. Um, I'm not how to, sure how to pronounce it, but in any case, it is a pretty cool project that uses uh, something that was new to me, which is, I guess, Luatex or Latex or something like that, that basically takes uh, templating and turns it into a PDF as kind of an output. So you can get an idea on what these resumes look like. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Classic because I think this kind of fits the accounting um, kind of... Uh, resume that we're going to look at and it's just pretty nice without being over the top right so if you can look at this it's basically giving you an idea on what we're going to be doing and it's going to be taking in kind of some resume experience from different jobs and then making it look pretty nice uh, there's also an education section we got a couple of links here um, we have the name, we have the, the word resume to tell you kind of what it is, we have the title, and all this stuff. So if we were to look at something like our JSON resume here, um, you can kind of see that we could just parse all of this information and then basically utilize this template. Of course, that requires us to look a little bit further into Latex's CV to see how it actually works. So I guess the first things first in that case uh, is to basically just do a git clone on this repo. And I will do that here. And of course, I will bring up VS Code. All right. So knowing that we're taking a look at Classic, we can just go into the Classic directory. And again, we see the PDF that we would expect. I'm actually going to rename this because I think the output file is going to also be called main.pdf. So I'll call this main.pdf.old. And then we can take a look at main.tex. Um, actually, first things first, let's go ahead and look at the instructions, right? Uh, that's always kind of a good first place to look. Um, but it looks like it uses Docker, right? So we need to have Docker installed, which I do. Um, I also need to, let's see, I can create an image uh, and then I can build an image. I think there's actually a Docker file included here, so I'm not sure that we need to create a new image. I think I can just go ahead and run this uh, and with some luck, it will generate that uh, resume from the template. So now using my terminal with Docker, I should just be able to run that command. Cool, now we can go ahead and go back to VS Code. And we do see the main.pdf. And there we go. Now, the issue, of course, is that we are generating the resume for Jean and not for our fake accountant, right? So we can go ahead and look at main.txt because that's actually where the template is, right? And if I scroll down here, you'll actually see all of those values hard-coded, which is not necessarily what we want to do because we want to have a JSON uh, document, which would just be a .json file, which is then parsed into our .txt template, right? Um, and so all this stuff basically needs to be changed. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, JSON file that has our 
uh, account and info in there. I have made a slight change to the actual headline uh, because I wanted one that kind of looks a little bit more like what we see here in this summary. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create accountant.json and paste this in there. And uh, if you have the, I believe it's uh, JSON Prettifier, um, you can actually have this look a little bit nicer here and it's a lot easier to read, right? Um, so yeah, what we're gonna go ahead and do is start modifying this uh, main.txt file so that it loads from our accountant.json file. Now the issue there is this is using Lua um, from what I understand, or at least the templating language is similar to Lua. Uh, and we need to use JSON, right? So there's actually something quite nice that I found, and that is called JSON Lua. And we can see that here. So the instructions for JSON Lua are basically to download and install it where I would like to use JSON Lua, right? So that needs to actually go into the Latex CV directory. So I can go ahead and go to json.lua, and I can go to raw, and I can copy this. Uh, and then I can just W get it to my directory. And I will just make sure that that has what I imagine it should have in it by doing a cat JSON Lua. And yeah, that looks like a bunch of Lua to parse JSON. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this. And we can go ahead and go back to VS Code. And so here is where I need to actually implement this into main.txt, right? And interestingly, if we wanted to use one of the other templates for the resume, you kind of have to do this uh, within the main.txt file there, right? If you look at modern, there's also a main.txt file and it's different. Um, so that's a little bit of a pain, but you can kind of copy and paste stuff accordingly. So I am just going to be doing the classic template for this video demonstration, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and look at main.txt and start implementing the usage of json.lua. All right, so within definitions, we need to actually use the package Lua code. So I'm gonna do use package Lua code here. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and leverage json.lua. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the headline because that's where we actually start using custom uh, items for the resume. Okay, so right here, we're gonna go ahead and begin some Lua code. And then I'm just going to basically paste this in and talk about what's going on here because I did leverage ChatGPT to figure out how to do this part. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're requiring the slash data, which is basically uh, the working directory of our Docker container and then the file JSON, uh, which is going to be this JSON.lua file that we just downloaded. Uh, and then we're going to actually use that to have our... Um, JSON reader leveraging that library, right? Um, and so at this point, we can go ahead and start declaring a few custom uh, items that are going to in turn parse our JSON. And uh, they are basically gonna be new commands, right? And those new commands are gonna look like this, new command get value. And for the very first one, we're just going to go one depth in our JSON. So that's just going to be a very simple, um, statement here which will be direct lua text.sprint data and then we're getting the very first section so it'll be number one so that will be one and there we go so we can go ahead and kind of copy and paste this a little bit um, because we're going to have something called get nested value which is going to be uh, if we look at our Let's see, if we go ahead and look at the accountant resume, for example, so the first one, get value, would be, we'd basically just feed it first name and then it would get Alex, right? But in the event that we want to get the phone number, we need to get nested, which would be contact phone. And so that would kind of get like that depth of two, which would give us the phone number. And that's basically what we're doing here and we're declaring these definitions. So the next one is going to be get nested value. And then we're actually going to have a two here. And in our data, we're going to feed this a second depth, which will be two. So we also need one to get a third value. You can kind of see what's going on here, but I'm gonna have this one called get deep value. 
and we will go ahead and make this a three and then add a number three at the end here. And so for the final one, we're going to deal with experience in the event that it is at a level of four. So you might actually uh, have predicted that we're just basically going to copy and paste this and add a fourth here. So we should be all done with our custom commands. And at this point, uh, we can go ahead and start parsing from our JSON. All right, so there actually are a few things that we need to do before we can start extracting from our accountant.json first is to actually change that redacted.json from my copy and paste to accountant.json. Uh, and then when we go through and double check these uh, get value, get nested value, get deep value, we gotta make sure that this one is get experience. So once that is set, we can go ahead and basically change Jean Cooster's name to a function called a get value, right? So I've removed Jean Cooster from here and to put backslash get value first name. So when we build this PDF, we should actually get our first name field from our JSON, in this case, just Alex. Um, and there are a couple things that we need to go ahead and do. First of all, I'm gonna remove this PDF because we wanna see what it looks like after generating it. I need to go into the Docker directory and create a new file called Dockerfile. There's no extension here at all. It is just Dockerfile. And if you click on that, you can actually see the contents here. I'm not gonna write that out line by line because it is a bit painful to do so. But you can see that I have created that Docker file that was in this directory. And that file did not exist in this directory previously. There was a canned Docker file that existed here uh, after I did the git clone, but this one is different. So please pay special note to what is present here. So on top of that, we actually need to change our build.sh file to actually use what we create here. So when I'm creating that file, once I've created Docker file, I need to actually build the image. Uh, and the way to do that is to actually open up the terminal. I'll do that really quickly here. I need to CD into Docker and I will build that image by Running this command here, docker build no cache t my custom latex image, and that will take a couple minutes to run. I'm not going to do it again since I've already done it, but you can see how to actually build that here. And then once I have my dash custom dash latex image, uh, I can go ahead and change our build.sh. So I'm going to go back to build.sh here. I'm making sure that that is pasted into image, and then I'll just put latest. Uh, basically what was already there. Um, we also need a writable directory. So uh, this build.sh file is pretty much exactly what existed previously, except for I changed this image here and I also added this dash E text MF cache equals forward slash temp. Uh, and that is going to give us a writable directory to use when building. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna change the compiler from PDF latex to Lua latex. Um, and that is going to be it for our build.sh file. So now that I have the Docker file and build.sh set up correctly, I should be able to actually grab this first name field from our accountant.json when I go ahead and build. So I'm gonna go ahead and cd backslash and then do a control r dot docker slash build.sh and that finds our command here and I should be able to go ahead and run that. And we did get an error. I'm not sure if that actually completed successfully. I do see main.pdf, but I do not actually see Alex there at all. So we have accountant.json, we have our main.txt. It looks like we are calling get value. I wanna make sure that that is actually set correctly. Uh, it has direct Lua, text.sprint, data, and then gets our number one. So I think accountant.json might actually need to be in the classic directory. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna just simply copy and paste that, rerun our command and see what happens. Okay, that is looking better. I didn't get that error about accountant.json. So I can go ahead and look at the PDF and I will refresh that, of course. And I actually do see that Alex is parsed. Okay, so uh, we are getting a slightly different font, but uh, I think we can go ahead and switch that quite easily. I'm gonna close this, delete main.pdf because VS Code doesn't refresh very well automatically. 
going to go ahead and make a quick modification here. We're going to change this to also have the last name. Um, so I'm going to do another get value. And in this case, we can just call from the last name field. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move up to a different font. I'm trying to remember which one that I used and had success with. Uh, let's see here. I believe it was the Comfort AA, um, which is a couple above this one. So I'm going to try this font, um, and we're going to go back to the name. So we did the get value first name, get value last name, and I'm hoping that we should actually see Alex Johnson there. So keep in mind, we do actually need to have an accountant.json in the directory that we're building a resume from. In this case, it is classic. And I can go ahead and rerun that. And in the resulting main.pdf, we actually do see Alex Johnson. I don't know why there's two, it looks like two spaces. Nope, it's just a giant space. Okay, so this font is pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of this video using this font and we can continue on starting to parse everything from our JSON file. So I'm gonna go ahead and close and delete main.pdf once again. And so now we can go ahead and just parse this stuff uh, based on what we want to be present in the resume. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go through line by line. I see resume. That's fine. Um, this is not what Alex Johnson happens to be, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do a get value. And then we're going to call from, I suppose, the title, um, which would just be title, right? So get value title. And then we have a location. It is not Bremen, Germany. I believe that is going to be contact... Actually, no, it's just going to be location, right? So we can do a get value for location, get value location. And you can probably see how this is going to look for pretty much the remainder of this video. And you might want to fast forward here if you don't want to see me do this manually, but I'm just going to do it manually because why not? Um, so we have status. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, we're going to go ahead and go to the website. Um, which I can get from contact. Now this is actually a different one. So this will be get nested value. Uh, and I don't actually know if this is a real website or not. So, you know, be careful just in case. Uh, but ChatGPT said alexjohnsonaccounting.com is a good website for Alex Johnson's accounting website. Uh, and I tend to agree that that's probably a decent bet. Um, so I can go ahead and do a get nested value of contact and then website one, right? So that will be a call to get nested value contact website one. And then we have an email which will be in contact as well. Contact email. Please do not email this person. Uh, I don't know if it's a real person or not. Uh, but yeah, it probably is. In any case, we'll get the fake email or presumed to be fake email by doing get nested value contact email. And then the phone number, of course, will be different as well. Um, contact phone is also nested value. And that should be it for those sections. Of course, we have the ones on the right, which uh, status, I just wanna make sure that I have that correct in accountant.json. Under status, I, I see actively seeking new opportunities. Okay, that's fine, we'll just leave that. Um, so that would just be get value status. Get value status. And I think fields, yep, yeah, is the same thing. And then, uh, da, 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 what do we have? For technologies, I guess that would be this list here, which would be a get nested value skills list.
And then activities, I think, was at the bottom. Yeah, it's just activities. Get value activities. And I think that the skills list and the activities list might be too long. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim them down a little bit. So activities, we'll just say member of... I think I can just do this, right? And volunteer tax prepare. Okay, so that's good. Um, and then I can go ahead and trim down uh, the list of skills. So financial reporting, taxation, audit and assurance, budgeting. I think that's probably good. I don't know anything about accounting, but that sounds good to me. We'll go ahead and go back to main.txt. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and generate this at this point and just see what it looks like. So I have a typo. There's a T that's missing here. Uh, and this is pretty common when going through this line by line, right? Um, but I can go ahead and go back and look for the GE value, which I guess is here. All right, I'll try and rerun that. And we'll take a look at the PDF. All right, so we have Alex Johnson, resume, accountant, status, actively seeking new opportunities, fields, accounting, finance, financial reporting, taxation, activities. We have the location, the fake website, the fake email, the fake phone number. Uh, and this is starting to look really good. We still have some of the hard-coded stuff left from Jean. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace that as we continue on here. So the next thing needs to be the summary. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So we're going to go ahead and go down to the summary section. Uh, and I could actually pull the title summary from... Actually, I don't know how I would do that. I, I probably have to have a new custom function to just get the key rather than the value at the key. So um, summary and headline are pretty similar. So I guess I can probably just get value on headline here if I were to guess, which would just be this. Uh, and I'll go ahead and replace this with our headline. Uh, and then I can kind of move down. We see experience. That's probably a fine word to have hard-coded because that's essentially what we're doing. Um, we do need to actually pull from, I guess, three jobs here. So that is a different number than what Jean had. Um, so I can go ahead and remove, I think. I think I can go ahead and remove company four and company five. And I'm hoping that that will work fine. Um, but from the experience, we need to pull, the first thing we need to pull are the dates, right? Which would be get deep value, experience, company one, dates. So in order to do that, we can do basically a get deep value, company one. Is that what it is? experience company one dates so experience company one dates and similarly i think i have a title in there yep title so i'll do the same thing i'll basically just copy and paste this statement um, and then that was title so this will change the title and finally it will have a name uh, which is also get deep value name. So there's two items that we see that are hard coded here, and kind of the difference on what we see with accountant.json is that there's simply a list um, called summary. And this is going to be something that we change. We're going to want to rewrite this with ChatGPT, and that will actually come later in the video. But for right now, I think we can just do a get deep value summary and that should work so we'll go back to main.txt and we'll go ahead and get rid of this completely and here we will do our get deep value and that will just go experience company one summary and so now you see that there's several items right there are five items in Jean's resume. Um, we're going to go ahead and do three. So I'm going to remove those bottom two. I'm getting a, I don't know if this is an error in the syntax or what. I'm going to go ahead and just skate past that for now. 
Going to copy and paste this, of course, and we're going to change company one to company two. And if you're wondering how I did that, I just highlighted the first instance of company one that I wanted to change, and then I hit control D for each additional instance that I wanted to change. And I will just change this to company two, and I can do the exact same thing for company three. All right, so of course, this is probably a good time to build this uh, with our job experience and take a look at what that looks like. No errors to see other than a few warnings, of course, and we can go ahead and look at main.pdf. And everything is looking pretty good. I do see December 2015 kind of, I don't know what happened here with this line. Um, maybe December is just too long of a word, so it kind of jumped down. But for the most part, this looks pretty good. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at education. I see that this summary, based on the fact that we only have three uh, experience items, this should probably have a lot more stuff on it. Um, and we can leverage ChatGBT for that. I'll do that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and take care of education and the kind of, uh, I guess, whatever you would call this, the footer here at the bottom. And then we'll pretty much be done. And then we can leverage some rewriting tech from the OpenAI API. So I'll go ahead and delete main.pdf here, and we'll go down to the education section. So, um, very similar to the previous, I'm going to go ahead and take the year from our education section. And I don't actually think I have a graduation date in education, so we can add that. Um, Let's see, okay, grad date, or grad year, maybe. And we'll just put, I don't know, uh, what makes sense with this. We have 2018 to present, and uh, the first job was 2013. So let's go ahead and just put 2013. And so we can go ahead and pull from that from main.tex. Uh, we'll go down here and education. We'll just do a, I believe that would be a get nested value education grad year. Get nested value education grad year. And uh, we'll just do graduated as and we'll get the degree, which is a Bachelor of Science in Accounting. So education degree, get nested value get nested value education degree and then the actual school is New York University which would be get nested value education university I can just copy this and change degree to university and we basically have a Dean's list and we can just say achievement I guess achievement and then I'll have a get deep value education highlight name get deep value education highlight name and we can also have a description there And I think that's it for education. Um, so there's only going to be one line. This is going to be a short resume, as you can kind of see here. Actually, we could do uh, training as part of our education as well. Now, we're probably going to need to create a new function for training list because this is a list and we haven't actually dealt with that just yet. But we can take a look at what we need to do here in a moment. So I'll just do a training list. So get nested value training list will be our next line item. And since this is ongoing, we can probably just say like 2013. This is uh, hard coded, which I don't really like, but we can just do 2013 to present. And uh, what we have here, we'll just have trainings, professional training. And we'll put various here. So then we can basically do, like I said, get nested value training list. 
And I think that should be it for our education section. So before we generate this, I'm going to change the footer websites. Um, we're just going to go ahead and reuse the website from this, which I believe is just contact website one. So get nested value. Get nested value contact website one. And I know this is a little boring, but I think we're just going to use the same thing. Actually, wasn't there a LinkedIn? I think there is a fake LinkedIn uh, that we can use. So I will change this one to our fake LinkedIn, which is right here. So contact LinkedIn will be that one. I'll just copy this and change this to LinkedIn. All right, so we should be ready to generate this. And we'll take a look at the PDF. And there we go. So this resume is short but sweet, but it is actually parsing JSON and it is leveraging the Latex CV project to go ahead and generate a nice looking resume from JSON using Lua and the JSON Lua parser. So before we jump into the interesting chat GBT stuff, we do need to take a look at this because it didn't parse that list correctly. And basically what we need to do is have some method of taking a look at a list. And if you recall, in main.txt, we actually did have a get experience. And I haven't used that just yet. I'm pretty sure that I can leverage get experience and then just see which index of the summary that I want. Um, so if we get down here to the list, let's see what happens if I do a one which this is not zero indexed. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start with a one, two, three, four. I think we might need to change the actual definition of get experience. And we'll have this be a three and we'll get rid of this. Okay, so our get experience was actually set improperly. We do not need this to be in quotes. We actually need it to be just a number three here. And so we can go ahead and actually use our get experience when printing our experience for our trainings. Um, and I'm actually going to do this line by line just so we get some more verticality on the resume. I'm going to go ahead and do a get experience list two three and four and then we'll go ahead and run this and we'll take a look at the PDF and that is looking much better okay so there are a few issues with this uh, as mentioned there's not a whole lot of verticality like in terms of line items here so what I could do is actually leverage ChatGPT to rewrite this saying basically let a team of five accountants to manage end-to-end -end accounting processes, ensuring accurate financial reporting and compliance with tax laws, implemented a new budgeting system that reduced forecasting errors by 20. So I could literally say, you know, hey, can you make this a little bit more verbose? So here is my ChatGPT prompt for now, just as a test. You are an accounting resume writer and need to make this more verbose, possibly twice the amount of text characters. All right, that is way too many characters. This is probably six times too long. Can you try and just double the length of this, making it more verbose? Okay, ChatGPT, just you're doing too much. All right, so this is good. So I'm going to go ahead and change the summary, and um, we're going to go ahead and go back to accountant.json and I will replace this here. Then I'm going to ask ChatGPT to make this more verbose as well. And I'll just copy this without even reading it. Okay, so now we have some more verbose uh, line items. And I'm going to go ahead and regenerate this. 
And we'll take a look at the PDF. Nice. Okay, this is much better. Um, we do see some discrepancy with the actual length of the first item. The second and third are fine. I'm going to go ahead and go back through the chat GPT stuff. Sometimes if you have a character like the percent character uh, or double spaces or just special characters in general, it will break this entire thing, right? So I would highly recommend using things like the word percent, for example, uh, if you have a percent symbol. I just went through a bunch of painstaking troubleshooting to figure that out. But by and large, be very, very careful when using symbols. It will often break this entire thing. I don't know if it's a Lua thing or a JSON Lua thing or whatever the case may be. Just avoid using special symbols in your resume JSON. I went ahead and just reran this and we are looking pretty good at this point. Of course, I want to rewrite this using ChatGPT, uh, specifically the API. And so at this point, what we need to do is add a few things to our directory, namely our API key. So you do need an open AI API key to make this work. And what I will do is go ahead and go into the directory here, all the way up into the kind of like the highest level here. And I'm gonna create a new file called .env. And you may have seen this before. Basically, this is a blank file or a hidden file rather where I can create my open AI API key variable and basically have that not pass into my code um, and so the way to do that is to create a new variable here called open AI API key and then enter your API key text here um, so I'm going to go ahead and dump mine and, of course, not showing that to the entire world. And you should uh, also keep yours secret as well. Okay, so now that I have that taken care of, I can essentially create a Python file. Uh, Python script, rather. And that is going to be what we use to rewrite our summary section in our resume. And uh, when we go ahead and do that, we're just going to basically give the API a prompt of look at this text and rewrite it using the same text count. And I'm going to go ahead and create that new file and it's just going to be called rewrite.py. So there are a couple things going on here. One, I need accountant.json and my testing to be exactly the same for now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and update them so that they are the same. And this is kind of the basis. I think that I'm good with this using as a basis um, for the project going forward. And ultimately what I'm going to do is create a new file in this classic directory after running the rewrite.py script. And uh, at this point in time, I can actually delete this, I'm pretty sure. But I I'm going to leave it for now uh, as accountant old.json, just in case we need a backup. So in rewrite.py, we're going to go through this line by line. It's going to be somewhat verbose, but I need to import several things. Import JSON, open AI, OS, and subprocess. And I also need to do uh, from copy, import deep copy. And then from .env import load .env. So you actually need the uh, you need to go ahead and do this if you haven't already. Pip install python three .env. It might just be python .env, but in order to load from the .env file, you need python .env. So I'll let you take care of that. Uh, but then once you have that taken care of, you actually want to load the API key load .env. And this will fail if you do not have .env installed. So then we're going to go ahead and get the API key from env. And we can do that with openAI.API key equals os.getEnv openAI API key. And you also need openAI installed uh, via pip as well, I'm pretty sure. But we're going to go ahead and do a function, def rewrite to length and uh, that's going to take in our text 
and our target count, which will just be the desired text length, which is going to be right around our text length that we input as our uh, text, right? The length of text is going to be target count, essentially. Um, so it might actually be a little bit uh, redundant to have target count because we could just get the len of target or of text rather. But in any case, that's how I wrote it. So we will go ahead and query the model, uh, and that is GPT-4. So you will need an account that has GPT-4 access for ChatGPT slash OpenAI's API. Uh, in any case, I'm just going to do a response equals open AI dot chat completion dot create. And within this, I'm going to use the model I specified as GPT-4. And we're also going to have our messages list uh, basically look like this, which will be role system. And this is what we're telling the model to act as, right? Uh, it's kind of analogous to the prompt, I suppose, but in any case, this will be an F string. Provide a three line, non numbered, non bulleted summary. And I'm going to, let's see, so this is an F string. Uh, this can go to the next line, but I do need this here. Keep each line item under target count total characters. Um, separate each line item by a new line. Okay, so that should work. I'll go ahead and have this. Uh, and we'll have role user content text. All right, and then after that, we can go ahead and just return the response choices at index zero and the message content. And then we'll go ahead and open our resume. So with open accountant.json, right? as JSON resume or JSON res for short. Loaded res is going to be equal to json.load json res. And then we'll have our modified res set to a deep copy of loaded res. And so what we want to do is iterate through our resume job experience, right? So that would be a for loop for company and loaded res experience, right? And let's make sure that that is what we have experience. So that would basically be for company one, company two, company three. Um, and we'll go ahead and do a modified res experience uh, company summary and we're going to set that to a list right because we want three line items and you could you could basically determine that number yourself but i decided that three line items per company is a pretty good one and then i can basically do original text equals loaded res experience company summary right and that should get me to a Experience company summary. Yeah, so that will be this large paragraph, essentially. <clears throat> and then I can do a desired length. And we can basically say, I want to say this was like 70 characters. Because I, I, I want, and we'll go back to the actual PDF. I kind of want that to end right around here, right? And I think 70 is the length. So I'm just going to put 70 for now. We'll hard code that. We can change that later. But then I'm going to have rewritten text set to rewrite to length. And then I'll take my original text and then desired length. 
those will be my input parameters. And then I'm going to split this based on the new line character, which will be part of my response JSON. So split on the new line character. And then I'll basically say print f summary and then just rewritten text. So we'll get the rewritten text that way. And I think that should give us enough to at least output this to the console if I run rewrite.py. So I'm going to do that in, uh, I suppose I can do that here. Make sure that I have that file. Rewrite.py. So Python 3 rewrite.py. So of course, I do not appear to have OpenAI installed. I don't have .env either, so python-env. Cool. So this actually does give me a list, and it's doing it for all of the companies in the resume. And so I basically have a three-line summary. Led a team of accountants for accurate financial reporting and tax compliance. Uh, introduced a budgeting system boosting financial efficiency and reducing errors. So this looks good. It's taking that kind of input and it's rewriting it. Uh, and it's doing so in kind of a three line item method, right? And so at this point, I kind of want to add that to my summary list. Um, and if you recall, I actually created that in the modified resume. So this is a list here. So I can basically iterate through what we just got and change modified res such that it becomes a list and we append each of those line items to that list. And I can do that by just doing for item in rewritten text modified res experience company summary and this is now a list, right? So I can use append item.strip so I'm going to get rid of any like extra spaces and stuff like that at the end of each line, just in case there are spaces there. Uh, and then I can just go ahead and uh, let's see, when would I print modified res? So I want to do that while this is still open and after I've done this. So I could, in theory... Just print modified res. So I'm going to comment this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this again. And this should give me a huge JSON output. It's probably going to be one line and tough to read. Uh, but we'll take a look at that. Okay, so this is not actual JSON, right? It, it, I needed to do like JSON.dumps, I think, in order to get this looking right. Um, so if I were to paste this into a new file out test.json, yeah, so this is, it's not proper JSON. So I actually need to print, uh, I need to do the same thing. We can leave this file here. I'm going to go to rewrite.py and print json.dumps modified res. And that should actually give us something we can work with a little bit easier. Okay, so this should be able to be prettified, right? So if I go back to output or out test.json and paste this in, yeah, this is actual JSON. So now I can control shift P again, if you don't have this installed, I do recommend it. Um, but I can go ahead and prettify the JSON and now I see this. I actually see my summary. And if we go back to accountant.json, remember that this is not a summary. This is just like a blob of text paragraph. And so now I've created a nice little list summary. 
And what I could do at this point is I could use my basically the same. I think it's get experience, right? I could use the same function, get experience. Uh, I might need to, I actually need to modify it so it goes one more depth. But I could basically copy and paste um, this, and we'll do that in main.txt. We'll go back up to this right here, and I'll create a new one called get job experience. And this one actually will go a depth of four. So we'll have this be three, and this will be four, right? And um, so now with get job experience, I can basically pull from that summary that we see here. Now the issue is I need a file that basically gets created in classic um, that has the new data in it, right? So in order to do that, I could basically dump this to a file rather than just printing it. Um, and so what I'd want to do is create a file name variable file name and that will just be equal to uh, and I suppose that would probably go just directly in the classic directory so classic and then post rewrite dot json I think is probably a good name or eh, rewritten dot json will be the file name so then I can basically open the file for writing with open file name w for write as file json.dump modified res file. Okay, so that will basically do everything that we just did and then dump it to a file in classic, right? And uh, with a little bit of luck, we can go ahead and run that. Python 3, rewrite.py, and we'll take a look in our classic directory for a rewritten.json file. And that should take just a second. And there it is, rewritten.json. And that should have our summary list. Again, this is kind of hard to read, but I'm not going to prettify it. There we go, summary list. All right. So now we go back to our resume, we look at this, we see the blob of text, we want the rewrite, we want the line items. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can reuse, or rather use our new get job experience uh, and go back down to where we had get deep value for our job, right? And so now we're gonna change this. So this is going to be get job experience. Uh, and we'll need to do something tricky if we want to modify this the way that we want. No, I don't think we can. We have to just change this. Get job experience. Um, and I will do the same here. But now I can add our indices here, right? So this would be one. And we can get rid of these brackets. Um, this would be two. And this would be three. And we'll do the same thing here and here. OK. So now we just have to change the accountant.json to rewritten.json. And I should be able to just build that. Uh, we're going to take a look at the resume one more time. Um, we see the blob of text. And um, we can go ahead and build our resume based on what we just saw there. So now we have the new main.pdf. We see the line items. That looks a lot better to me. Um, we could maybe make this like five line items if we wanted. Um, as a matter of fact, that would be pretty easy. We can go ahead and modify this because we basically want to take a whole page, right? 
So I can go back to the rewrite.py and um, I can basically say provide a five line non-numbered, non-bulleted summary. So we'll go ahead and redo our rewrite. And without even looking, I'm just going to build the classic version of the resume. And then we can just take a look. And of course, I forgot to update main.txt. So going back to main.txt, you may have caught this, but I basically need to do four and five, and then copy and paste. And now I can rerun this. Okay, so what happened here, ChatGPT didn't actually give me a five line summary is the only thing that I can assume. And we can double check that by looking at rewritten.txt or .json rather, control shift P, prettify JSON. Yeah, it simply did not give us five lines there. Um, so there might be a couple of reasons for that. I'm just modifying the prompt a bit. You are a resume writer, or rather rewriter. Provide a five line, non numbered, non bulleted summary. So it might actually make sense to add some stuff to our summary, right? And if we go back to the chat GPT conversation, uh, we did get a bunch of other stuff, right? So this one was super verbose. So I could literally just copy and paste this and then maybe add something to the bottom one. Okay, so I made them a little bit longer. We'll give that a shot. Okay, this one actually worked pretty well. Um, so I can go ahead and build the resume. Nice. This is actually looking really good. And so really at this point, what I'd like to do is just automate the entire thing, right? So I could just, you know, maybe I wanted to generate this like 50 times and see which one looked the best, or maybe I could take some good stuff from one and, you know, paste it into the other um, and that kind of thing. So at this point, what it kind of makes sense to do is combine um, the rewrite.py and then the actual building of the resume. So in order to do that, I just took the chat GPT and asked how I can combine the running of a Python script and then the subsequent running of a bash script into one single bash script. And that would just be automate.sh. And I'll go ahead and just paste what I have in ChatGPT and modify it. So we'll go ahead and do our Python 3 rewrite.py. And then we'll do our Docker build classic. And then resume generated. Actually, re resume rewritten and generated successfully. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how you spell successfully. Is it? I don't know. So at this point, I should just be able to run automate.sh. All right, so I'm closing everything except for automate.sh. And we're going to go ahead and try this for the first time. I'm going to delete main.pdf. Actually, this is a good one, so I'm going to go ahead and... You might want to add some logic that, that changes the file name, but I'm going to put main01 so this doesn't get deleted. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go back and clear this, and I should just be able to run automate.sh. All right, so it took about 20 seconds, which if you think about it, we're basically taking a JSON resume and then we're rewriting it uh, based on the parts of it that we wanted to rewrite, namely the job experience summaries. And then we are adding those to a new JSON, essentially a copy of our previously unrewritten JSON. And then we're using uh, Latex CV to generate the entire resume from JSON, right? And so the result of that, of that uh, automation that we just basically created is that uh, it takes 20 seconds to get from where we just were to main.pdf, which you see here. 
And again, this is different from the main 01 that I just saved, so it's actually a separate version. And so you could do this unlimited times and just see which version of your resume that you like the most. And uh, you could obviously copy and paste from the stuff that was good and remove stuff that was bad. Um, you could even take this workflow that we just did and apply it to the other templates that we saw within the Latex CV project, uh, as you can see here, right? And uh, all in all, this is kind of a really powerful thing. And it all starts with having your resume formatted in JSON. So if you have taken away nothing else from this video, it's that it is really easy to automate stuff if the input format is uh, in a manner that is easily parsable, right? And JSON obviously is one of those formats. And uh, because of this entire process, I will be recommending friends, uh, coworkers, and so on and so forth have a JSON version of their resume because it really does make stuff like this much easier. So I know that this was somewhat of a long-winded video. Uh, I am hoping that you were able to get something out of it, uh, be it redesigning your resume or leveraging the ChatGPT API for specific projects you might have in mind. If that is the automation of text generation or rewriting things or whatever, um, you can see that it's relatively powerful and easy to implement and projects that already exist. Um, so yeah, thank you to the authors of the tools and projects that I have used in this video. And I will see you in the next one.